Why, Jack, I never suspected. The world doesn't understand me. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dark truths about classic film actors. What on earth have they been doing to you? Or you have everything to live for. For this list, we'll be looking beyond the glitz and the glamour at dark Hollywood truths that some probably wish never saw the light. Did any of these dark truths shock you? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Number 10. Joan Crawford removed her teeth. Who, uh, who are you, please? I'm a stenographer. Many of us have our own insecurities about our physical appearance, and celebrities are no exception. Especially the women who have societal expectations on them that men often don't have to deal with in the same way. And these expectations and insecurities can sometimes lead to rather extreme measures being taken to attempt to enhance one's appearance. And by my count, you're missing six molars? Extractions. What kind of medieval dental practice extracts six teeth without putting in implants? An example of which is Joan Crawford removing her teeth. No, she didn't take them all out, but in her early 20s, she did remove some of her back molars in an attempt to accentuate her cheekbones. My agent told me if I wanted to work past 25, I should invest in a set of cheekbones. Number nine, Shirley Temple was almost assassinated. Well, I eat watermelon and I have four years sing Polly Wally Doodle all a day. Not only was Shirley Temple the namesake of a delicious cocktail and one of the great child stars in the history of Hollywood, but she was also the target of an assassination attempt when she was still a little girl. So if the one you idolize is near you, a song of love will help you find the way. The perpetrator of the attempt was a sad and emotionally distraught woman who'd lost her daughter, supposedly at the same time that Temple was born. In her sorrow, the woman came to believe that Temple had stolen her daughter's soul and that targeting her would release it from her. The woman took out a gun during a live performance but was stopped before she could fire it. It's a sad story all around that thankfully ended without any physical harm to Temple. On the good ship, lollipop, it's a sweet trip to a candy shop. Number eight, Montgomery Cliff's life-changing car accident. A beautiful girl will place a garland of oak leaves on my sun-colored locks. I'd like to be that girl. Known for his roles in such films as A Place in the Sun and From Here to Eternity, Montgomery Clift was a big Hollywood star in the late 40s and 50s, until a car accident changed his life. Clift was filming Raintree County when, following a dinner party at co-star Elizabeth Taylor's house, Clift crashed his car into a telephone pole. The accident required plastic surgery and two months of recovery before the actor could finish the film. Besides the changes to his appearance, the accident led to Clift becoming hooked on alcohol and pills to dull the pain. He continued to make movies, but he was never really the same until he died at 45. You seem so strange, so deep and far away. So you were holding something back. Number seven, Stan Laurel's drinking. The comedy duo of Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy brought joy and laughter to so many people throughout the first half of the 20th century. What are you doing? I'm talking to you. What do you think I'm doing? But one person who wasn't laughing was Vera Shuvalova. Shivalova was Laurel's third wife and the recipient of some very scary threats from the beloved comic performer. Supposedly, Laurel had a problem with alcohol and needless to say, he wasn't a friendly drunk. Don't! Watch what you're doing! When the couple divorced, Shivalova made some very serious accusations, claiming that her husband had threatened her with a gun and even had dug a grave in their backyard telling her that he was going to bury her alive. Nothing funny about that. Your money or your life? What? Your money or your life? Number six, John Huston's vehicular manslaughter. John Huston's path to becoming one of the greatest directors of all time began in 1941 with his directorial debut, The Maltese Falcon. What is it? The uh, stuff that dreams are made of. 
However, prior to getting his shot at directing, Houston spent the beginning and the end of the 1930s as a writer in Hollywood. What about the middle years? Well, Houston spent those wandering around Europe following the death of actress Tosca Rulian, a death that he caused while driving intoxicated. Although somehow a coroner's jury did exonerate Houston of any blame. There was a rumor that Clark Gable was the one that killed Rulian, and Houston was paid to take the fall. See, Mr. Gitz, most people never have to face the fact that the right time and the right place, they're capable of everything. But given that Gable was elsewhere filming a movie at the time, the rumor doesn't appear to have any legs. I can manage well enough horizontally, but vertically I fall apart. Number five, Marilyn's stuttering began after childhood trauma. A number of famous actors had issue with stuttering as children, including, as fans of The Big Bang Theory know, James Earl Jones. Is it true, as a child, you were a stutterer and were functionally mute for eight years? It is true. But while people may be familiar with Marilyn Monroe's many life troubles, did you know that she too had a problem with stuttering growing up? I play the ukulele and I sing too. Sings too? <laughs> well, I don't have much of a voice, but then... This isn't much of a band. Many biographies have covered this fact, and Monroe herself talked about it in interviews. It got so bad at times that she, like other stutterers, was so scared and embarrassed that she basically stopped talking for extended periods. How exactly it started is obviously up for debate, but many biographers have attributed to the trauma of living with her mother, who suffered from schizophrenia, and her childhood in and out of foster care and orphanages. First time was at the orphanage, and then later in my teens, I stuttered. Number four, Marlon Brando's treatment towards Rita Moreno. Marlon Brando and Rita Moreno met on the set of the 1954 film Desiree, and like often happens in Hollywood, they started dating. A ragged army marching on wooden shoes. And you do not believe in destiny. There's no denying Brando's brilliance as one of the greatest actors of all time. However, when it came to women, Moreno called him a bad guy. That opened an old scar. And I started screaming at him. Besides the lying and cheating and bursts of rage, Moreno also revealed that Brando forced her to terminate a pregnancy while they were together. It was all too much for the young actress, who has also been open about how it led to her almost taking her life. That's how I tried to do it, and it really was an attempt to do that. Number three, Hitchcock stalked his own actress. Besides a small, uncredited role in 1950, Tippi Hedren made her big screen debut in, in Alfred Hitchcock's 1963 film, The Birds, and followed it up next year in Hitchcock's Marnie. If you don't mind, I'd like to go to bed. You'd think that after having such success with such a great director, that the two would have worked together again, but they never did. Although it wasn't because Hitchcock didn't like Hedren, but rather because he liked her too much. I started noticing that um, uh, he kept watching me, staring at me. The great director became obsessed with Hedren, and her time on both films was filled with emotional and mental mistreatment and unwanted advances from Hitchcock. From isolating her from the rest of the cast by forbidding any of them to talk to her, to demanding she be sexually available to him, which she refused. I became very, very good at getting out. I've always, I would always have somewhere to go, had to be somewhere, had something to do. Number two, Chaplin liked younger women. Charlie Chaplin made over 80 movies. That's a lot. However, it pales in comparison to the number of women he slept with, a number that he claimed was over 2,000. And while we don't know the ages of all of them, the ones we do know make us, shall we say, uncomfortable. He married his first wife, Mildred Harris, in 1918. Chaplin was 29, and Harris was only 16. Chaplin felt forced into marrying his second wife, Lita Gray, when the 35-year-old icon discovered that the 16-year-old Gray was pregnant. In 1943, at the age of 54, Chaplin married for the fourth and last time. His wife, Una O'Neill, was 18. But the couple have eight kids and remained together until Chaplin's passing in 1977. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Judy Lewis was the secret child of a huge star. Soap opera actress Judy Lewis's life sounds like the script from an episode of afternoon television. I wish you hadn't. Why not? Oh, I haven't let myself think about that. I didn't dare. But it isn't. Lewis's mother was actress Loretta Young, and her biological father was Clark Gable. However, Gable was married at the time, so attempting to avoid a scandal, Young hid her pregnancy and placed her baby into orphanages when she was born. After 19 months, Young adopted her daughter back, but her stunning resemblance to Gable meant that most of Hollywood knew the truth. Well, the first time I knew who my father was, I was 23 and I was two weeks away from being married. Young even had a seven-year-old Lewis get her ears pinned back in order to try and hide the similarities. Eventually, Young admitted the truth to her daughter and claimed that she wasn't conceived consensually. It wasn't until I was 31 that I finally did ask my mother and did hear the truth from her. But by that time, my father had died. 